Bulletin of News and Information for the Radio and Television Trade. Today we look at some of the problems of building new television relays for people who are still unserved. A reminder of the CAI exhibition which takes place tomorrow and Thursday in London. In Transmitter News, the latest relays to be equipped with Channel 4 and details of two brand new relays. In the north of Scotland, Durness and in Torbay in Devon, Brixham. More details later. There are 51 main high-power television stations and more than 800 television relay stations in the United Kingdom, with over 99.3% of the population able to receive ITV and the BBC television services, a little less for Channel 4, which will equal their coverage by the end of the year. This still leaves many areas and more than 300,000 people unserved. To reduce the number, the IBA and BBC between them are still building 25 brand new relay stations a year. But it is becoming more and more difficult to build relays which will not spoil reception for more viewers than the new relay will serve. There are only 44 channels which have to be used over and over again. These are divided into nine standard groups where possible and assigned to individual relay stations. The use of a group of channels in an area will depend not only on the likelihood of the relay causing interference to other stations, but also the possibility of interference from other stations. Interference between two stations using the same channels and frequencies becomes unacceptable when the unwanted vision carrier level at the receiver input is greater than 45 dB below the wanted station. But if the vision carrier frequency is offset by 5 thirds of line frequency, the level of unwanted signal that can be tolerated improves to 30 dB below the wanted station. The use of offset working, therefore, allows higher levels of co-channel signals to be tolerated. The distance between planned co-channel stations can be decreased and the channels used more often by taking advantage of the three choices of vision carrier frequency which can be used. But the choice of channels is further limited with certain channel relationships unable to be used in adjoining areas. If the existing relay channel is N, then a new relay on channel N plus 5 is on the same frequency as the local oscillator of a television receiver using the existing relay. If the new relay is 5 channels below the existing relay, then the local oscillator in receivers using the new relay will be on the same frequency and cause interference with the existing service. Neither is it possible to use channel N plus 9, which is the image frequency for existing receivers, while channel N minus 9 would have the existing service as its image frequency. Adjacent channels can also cause interference and need to be avoided. All this means there is a limit to the channels which can be used for a relay station. To maximise the use of channels throughout the country, the normal spacing between the four television services is a 3-3-4 channel spacing. But this is not always possible, and non-standard channel groupings are becoming increasingly necessary. Discrimination against reception of unwanted stations can also be improved by the location of relays relative to each other, by using different aerial polarisation at relays, and by the improved directivity and gain of using large receiving aerials at homes within the service area of relays. These relays are quite often of very low power and at the edges of their service area signal levels can be quite low compared with the signal levels in many parts of the service area of high power transmitters. High power television transmitter stations use horizontal polarization with relays normally using vertical polarization although now more relays are using horizontal polarisation to all or parts of their service areas. When the channel allocations and other technical problems have been finalised, there's still the matter of acquiring a suitable site for a relay. Local councils can place restrictions on the use of a suitable site. Reasonable road access is needed, as is a nearby main supply. It's also necessary to be able to receive satisfactory signals and retransmit them to cover the target area. Under present guidelines from the government, relay stations are built when there is a population of about 200 or more which is truly unserved by any other station and for which a relay station could be economically built. While the capital cost of providing the four channel service from Crystal Palace was less than 50 pence per person, it costs an average of £100 per person to provide a service from the television relays which are now being built. 
With many areas still unserved, and the present rate of building relays, self-help could be a solution to the problem of viewers without a satisfactory service. And a leaflet on self-help is available. We'll be happy to send you a copy if you contact us. The annual exhibition and seminars of the Confederation of Aerial Industries will be held tomorrow and Thursday at the IBA's London headquarters, 70 Brompton Road. We still have a few admission cards for this trade-only event. If you would like one, give us a call today. Our telephone, as usual, coming up at the end. Transmitter news now, starting with special announcements. Today, tomorrow, and possibly Thursday and Friday, the main high-power station at Rosemarkey in the north of Scotland is expected to be off until midday for weather-dependent aerial maintenance. This will also affect Rumster Forest, Knock Moor, Keeley Lang Hill, and all the dependent relays. Tomorrow morning in Derbyshire, Chesterfield will be off between 9 and 9.30 for electricity board maintenance. While in Avon, Bath will be off from 9.30 to 11.30 tomorrow morning for an electrical inspection. On Thursday and Friday, Pontop Pike will be on reduced power from 9am until 4pm for electrical maintenance. And in Scotland, Killin is expected to be off for about two hours each day on Thursday and Friday, weather permitting, for mast maintenance. Advanced warning now that Ayshaw in the Western Isles will be liable to reduced power working between 8.30am and 12.30pm for four days starting next Tuesday, the 19th of May, for cylinder painting. Day-to-day -day transmitter information can be found in detail on Oracle, page 697. By mid-morning, we aim to get as much information as possible on air about engineering work for that day. New relays now, and on the north coast of Scotland, Durness is expected to be on the air later this week. It's for about 210 people in Durness and Lerinmore and the surrounding areas. Grampian Television and TVAM will be on Channel 53, with Channel 4 on 60. Group CD aerial should be used vertically polarised. That's Durness expected on the air towards the end of the week. Also expected on this week, the new relay which will serve part of Brixham in Devon. It's for about 2,400 people, of whom 1,000 already have a marginal service from either Beacon Hill or Stockland Hill. The coverage area includes mainly central areas of Brixham, along the valley on either side of New Road and Middle Street. TSW and TVAM will be on Channel 43 and Channel 4 on 50. Group B aerials are needed, vertically polarised. Brixham is now due on the air later this week. Channel 4 next, and another relay now equipped. In Derbyshire, Ashford in the Water on Channel 29, which brings Channel 4 to another 800 people. But delayed and now due this week in Norfolk Creek on 42 and Little Walsingham on 47. Expected next week in Mossley, Greater Manchester, Brook Bottom on Channel 68, and near Aberdare in Micklemorgan, Camamon on 42. Now due at the end.